Pinky strength! Left hand pinky strength! When I go by Baltimore Need no carpet on my floor Dave Van Ronk, Green Green Rocky Road. I'm very excited to bring you all this song. Thank you, Nigel. Um, he also is the one who did my Mike's animation. You little walking cartoon man. Thanks again, an old student and a friend of mine. He turned me on to this song. You know, I know that film being Lewin Davis, Dowski, uh, whatever it's called. Um, but I didn't really know, you know, I knew, okay, Dave Van Ronk was on the scene before Dylan was. Listen to some songs, just kind of meh about them. I did do Mac the Knife, which is a great song. But this is another fantastic tune. And the more I play it, and after I learned it, I was like, man, this guy can really finger pick. It never jumped out in other songs. But again, I guess Mac the Knife is really good too. I don't know why I've been underrating Van Ronke over here. Because this is another, another great tune. You're going to love it. It's in drop D. There's a lot of fun, cool finger picking things happening. And it's just so... I'm being redundant, as I always am. It's a great song. It's pretty hard. If you're new to finger picking, don't start here. Always go to my video, the Travis Picking Primer. And also, maybe even before that, check out the Travis Picking Playlist and do the first three or so videos in that series. But for you who are ready, if you've done some Towns and Prine, and if you've done Hurt, you're ready for this song. You're going to love it. The finger, it's just so much fun. Add it to the repertoire, and let's do it together. Here we go. This song has the capo on the fifth fret, and we are tuned to drop D. So you can drop D, put your capo on. Always retune after you put the capo on because there's capo pinch happening. One more thing you can do. Ronk, I'm pretty sure he doesn't do this, but it makes it a heck of a lot easier. So I think I've out ronked Ronk. Uh, I would, your fifth string, instead of it being an A, bring it down a whole step to a G. I mean, I know the capo's on the fifth fret, so it's different, but this is also down a whole step. So with the capo on the fifth fret, it would be a C, but, you know, if you don't have the capo, it's a G. And I'll show you why I'm doing that. It makes a song a lot easier, and I'll explain when we get there. You don't have to do that. That's optional. In, in the tab, I don't do that, so don't worry about it, but if you're... You know, if you think the song's a little bit beyond your skill level, then tune that one down and we'll discuss why in a moment. But that's your tuning. Just drop D, capo five. Let's do it. Measure one, let's dive right in. Our thumb is just going between six and four. That's it, pretty straightforward, six, four, six, four. The melody is really cool. Uh, let's do it. Think of it as a D chord. You don't need the high E string, but I got second fret with my pointer on the third string. Then I'm using my ring finger, third fret on the second string. So like a D chord, but we don't need the first string yet. I'm pinching six and three. Oops, sorry. <laughs> so I lied to you a second ago because that second string is open right now. So we start just with our pointer, but we're kind of going to use those fingers. So pinching six and three. I'm using my thumb and index, then I'm immediately hitting the second string with my middle finger. Then it's the thumb. So that's the first part. Pinch and two, pinch and two, six, three, two, and then thumb on four. It's the beginning of it. And then immediately we're going back to the second string, but I'm putting that ring finger down on the third fret of the B string. Second string, thumb, second string. Really slow again. I think you got that first half of the measure. Then the second half is easy. It's just thumb on the sixth, open on the second, thumb on the fourth. That's it. Three and four. Open, open, open. So the whole thing, three, four. 
messed it up. Three, four. Measure there. Measure two, same thing, thumbs just going between six and four. Got that D chord shape, same idea. And now we're actually gonna have all of them down. I mean, you only technically need the first two strings, but just kind of know that's the fingers that I'm using, so. Cool little measure. I'm pinching six and two, and the third fret's down on the two. And I'm immediately hitting the second string again. The classical world, they'll have you alternate doing middle pointer, middle pointer, or pointer middle. If you want to do two pointers in a row, that's fine. I'm not going to beat you up about it. So we have pinch, that second string alone, then the thumb on the fourth string. And then immediately we do the second fret on the first string. So it's pinch, that same note again, thumb on the fourth, and then the first string using my middle finger and then it just ends with thumb thumb that's it six four pinching six and two two again four one pinch two four one thumb, if we put those two measures together three Measure three is the same as one. Nothing new there. So let's do it from the top. Measure four. This happens, there's a movement here that we really have to get down. That's difficult and it happens again, again in the song. So let's discuss it. Guitar transformation. I'm interrupting. I recorded everything already. And I was like, hmm, I kind of expressed these chord changes too many different ways. I wonder what's really happening here. And I, I, I don't know why I didn't do this before, but I found a clip of Dave Van Ronk. It's Van now, I realized it. Back from the, the future. Uh, but he's using his thumb. Duh. I, I learned the guitar in my nylon string. And it didn't even occur to me. So every time I bring up that shape, please realize now, because I'm going to talk about it a lot in the video, but, but remember this correction. Every time he's doing that three and five, his thumb is playing the five on that low string. So that's the chord shape. He's got his thumb on five, and he's playing three and five. That way you don't have to tune it weird to get that open on the next string. You don't have to play it this weird way that I express where your ring finger's over here and you're using your pinky, although you can, but he's doing this, three, five, and then his thumb is playing the five. Dave himself. I got to the bottom of it. Solve the riddle, Dave. Yeah. Thank goodness for YouTube and in the collection of all these old great um, players performing. It's really unbelievable. So that's really cool. I got to see Dave do it himself. He's using his thumb. For those of you who hate doing the thumb on the F chord, sorry, here's, this is even weirder because your thumb's got to stretch all the way to five when you're playing three and five. It's like a weird crossover, even goofier kind of stretch. But, you know, on an electric guitar, it's actually not that bad. So every time in the video that I bring up these chords, remember that it's the thumb. That's how he's doing it. Riddle solved. Top of measure four, we have this shape. I'm doing the fifth fret on that sixth string and I'm doing it with my ring finger, and then I'm doing the third fret on the second string. So get used to that shape, it's gonna happen a whole bunch. And what we have to get used to is going from this shape to a D chord. So we have this shape and then a D chord. So practice that a whole bunch, because you're gonna to wanna to have it down really quick, because it's gonna happen a whole bunch in the song. Let's do this measure. Mess it up. There we go. In this
this measure, you don't have to do that much movement. You could stay here. But you want to get used to the movement because every other moment in the song, he's going to add other notes where you're going to want to be in that position. So just get in the habit now of doing it. So let's talk about that. We have the beginning, five and three, right? Five on the six, three on the second string. I'm pinching those two, six and two, immediately hitting the first string with my middle finger. I'm pinching thumb and pointer, then hitting the second string, then thumb on fourth, and there's where I lift my hand. Get used to that. Pinch, first string, thumb on fourth, and I'm moving to that D chord right away. Here, I'm not doing the whole D chord, but I'm using that ring finger. That's the important part. Using the ring finger to get that three. So it's a pointer finger here, then it's the ring finger there, and it's six, four, after we do that. Try to get that really smooth. Spend a while on that. If that's not smooth, the rest of the song is gonna be very difficult. So maybe stop there. Maybe for a week, you're just doing these first four measures and let's play them all together. Three, four. Oh yeah, Ronky. Donation pitch. Guys, if you're here, you're getting value from this channel. And all I'm asking is if you consider the value for value model. Nothing at Mike's Music Method is behind a paywall. I promise you it never will be, which means every young buck who doesn't have the cash, any person going through hard times who doesn't have the cash, they can sit here and learn and get great content on the internets. Here at Mike's Music Method, who else is doing these great finger picking tutorials of all your favorite songs? Mike's Music Method. Who else is giving you detailed, accurate Mike's Music Method? You, you, get, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So that's it. Every, every buck you give means that another person out there is getting access to a song. The more time you buy me, the more videos I can make. I've got 5,700 subs right now. If each one of you guys gave just a buck a month, I could quit my day job and like bring you a Towns Van Zandt song every couple days. We could get through the Towns catalog together, the Prime catalog. You know what I'm saying. The value for value model. Uh, one more thing is if you were taking private guitar lessons, I feel like I'm giving similar value. This channel has a ton of content. You could be spending 160 bucks on private lessons, but here I am out of the kindness. No, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna boost myself up. Whatever, I'm giving, I'm good at this. I realize I'm good at this and I'm giving it to y'all, hoping that you know, you'll give some value back. Maybe that value is just a really kind email. But if you have you know, 20 bucks a month, five bucks a month, consider it, help out, and, and we'll make the world finger pickers. Make America a finger picking nation once again, okay? The world needs it, now more than ever. We need young bucks picking. So when they grow up, there'll be old bucks who can pick. And you know what that does for the world, don't you? And here is the tuning cheat. If you've done that a bunch and you're just like, what the heck, this shape is hard. It's only gonna get harder as he adds more notes to that big jumping shape. Now, I don't think Ronk does this because once in a while you hear him trying to get to that shape and he kind of flubs it a little bit. So I'm pretty sure that is the shape. But if he had put a little thought into it, what you can do is the fifth string should be an A, right? But if you tune it down to a G, if you drop it like you did the lowest string, right? Two frets lower. The capo on the fifth fret, it's now a C, but you get the idea. Normal tuning, it would be a G. Now that note is the same as that fifth fret. Fifth fret on the lowest string is now the same as open on the fifth string, right? They're the same notes. I tune them the same. So now, every time you see that five on the sixth string in the tab, remember all the, all the tabs are, are free, uh, mikesmusicmethod.com, download the tab. I didn't do an alternate version because I don't think a lot of people should do it this way, but if you love this song and you can't play it that way, all of the fives on that sixth string, you can just now play as open because we tuned it differently. So again, substitute all those six string fives with open on on the fourth, on the fifth string. <laughs> so this five is now becomes open on the fifth string. And do that throughout the whole tab. 
and then that shape's going to be so much easier. So I'm not going to discuss that again and again, but look how much easier this measure is now. So I'll just do that measure four, where instead of having to do this shape, I can just stay here because now I'll play this. I don't need that five way over there. And I can just do... That's infinitely easier. And you'll realize as the song goes on, as you're adding more notes, that really comes in handy. But if you're a decent player, don't do that. Ronk isn't doing it. Um, in drop D, most players do that chord that way when it comes up. But just wanted to show you a little shortcut. I'm not going to bring it up again because I don't want to do the alternate one every single time. But you can always replace that fifth fret note with open on the adjacent string. Measure five is nearly the same as one and three. We just have an extra note at the end. third string as an and beat. One and two and three and four and it's that and note. He only does it in the intro. He doesn't do it when he's singing, but it is a cool little extra little pickup beat there, a little hiccup that I that I think is really hoppy and fun. Then we've got measure six. Let's keep going. Not too much new material, but it is different here. Pinching six and two and then immediately playing open on the first string. Then I'm hitting the fourth string. Pinch six and two with the third fret down. Open and thumb alone. And then immediately I'm putting the middle finger down to snag the second fret on the first string. If my eyes are wandering, it's because I'm going from you, sweet YouTuber, to um, the tab up above your head. You can't see it up above your head, but I see it up above your head. The tab floating above your head. All right, so we have this. It's just thumb, thumb. Did we already do that measure? I don't know. Here we got measure seven. Oh. We've seen though that melody before, but it's cool. Just like John Hurt is brilliant at this. I didn't realize how good uh, Ronk was at this as well. But he'll take the same melody instead of boo, 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 boo. It's now boo, 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 boo. So instead of syncopating it, he gives it to you all straight, which makes it feel weird because you're used to hearing it syncopated. Very clever melody trick, which is to do the same exact melody, but do something interesting with the rhythm. Again, John Hurt's brilliant at it, and Ronk is just like unbelievable on this song. I've all, you know, I don't know that many Dave Von Ronk songs. Van Ronk, Von Ronk, I don't even know if I'm saying his name right. Uh, but the ones I've heard, I'm, I'm usually just kind of like, ah, oh, they're okay, some stand out, but this one's like unbelievable. So I don't know how that happens. Maybe there are better ones that my ear just hasn't quite grabbed yet, but this one stood out like a golden thumb. Not a sore thumb, but like a golden sore thumb. Yeah. All right, so we're at this measure. I'm doing that kind of D chord idea, but we again, we're lifting and putting things down. So I'm pinching sixth string and third string, but I have the second fret on the third string. Then I'm doing open, open on four and two, but you can keep that finger down so it rings. I'm keeping that finger there. Oh, uh, six and three, then four and two. I'm doing thumb and middle. So thumb pointer, thumb middle. Then I'm putting my ring finger down on three and I'm doing six and that second string there. So from the top, six, three, four, two, six, two, with that finger down. Back to four, two, open again, like we had before. And then I lift that index finger finally and then do an and beat on the third string with my pointer. And he's doing that open because now he's shifting to that other chord, right? So I said, right, darn it. Right, I'm getting ready. That's why he doesn't keep that two down. We're, we're anticipating the next chord. One more time. And then get ready for the next chord. Measure eight, you'll see what I'm talking about with this tricky chord change here. So it starts with that fifth fret and the third fret, six and two. We pinch those, six and two. First string is open immediately, then thumb on the fourth. Six, two, first string, thumb on the fourth. And here, when we hit that thumb on the fourth, I want you to move to that D shape and put your ring finger down on the third fret. 
because we're going to get that. So it's... Second string with my pointer finger, and then my thumb does a six. So... And then I'm adding my index finger on the second fret of the third string. And my thumb is heavy here. He gives a lot of energy. So he's not only hitting four, but he's hitting three with it. Again, that's why you got to get to that shape really quickly. And when I hit that third fret, I'm already putting that one down. So again, I'm in my mind, I'm anchoring it as a D chord. D chord. I'm not putting the middle finger down. You can if you want. Whatever gets you to think of D chord and gets you there in time. on that and beat, kind of tricky. Pinch and thumb and I'm already switched. And I don't know why I keep hitting that index finger heavy, but I do. I, I don't know what he's doing there. I think it's just the one note. And then heavy on the thumb of the fourth beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go nice and slow and sweetly through the first eight measures. So pretty. Two, three, four. Oh. pretty unsatisfying. Beautiful. It gets more complicated, but even that alone is so pretty and great. Just really, really excellent finger picking. But we're going to keep going with the rest of the song. It gets a little more tricky. You can tell I'm talking fast. I'm getting excited, but it's super cool. Sit with that for a while. Feel good about it. Get confident. Get really comfortable before you move on because it starts to get a little trickier. But I know you can do it. I know you can. Great songwriting here. In measure nine, similar concepts, but he builds on them with, with dynamic. He's adding an extra little harmony note. It gets louder. There's some cool slides. You're going to love it. So measure nine. Adding a little extra color. We are doing six, and then we're pinching one and two. We have open on the first string and then the third fret on the second. So it's like a D sus two. Just need that third finger, right? I'm doing pointer and middle to hit them both open. So six, one and two. Sorry, open and three. Then the thumbs on four. So that's it. It's the first half, easy enough. Then we pinch, and I put my middle finger down. So now it's a regular D chord. And then thumbs alone on four. Pinching six to one and two. And then thumb alone. once you get used to it. Just lifting that middle, putting it down. Measure 10 is just kind of like the ending of nine. You can think of it as an extra two beats, or you can think of this as its own measure minus two beats, because it is like an extra two, four. Ronk drops two notes here, and it's just six and thumb, and it's that D chord again. Two and three. Six, those two, and then four. So if you play measure nine, you hear it a little better with it. You have measure nine. And that's it. So again, it's one, two, three, four, one, two. There's no three, four, because then the next part starts off. Very typical in folk. Dylan for sure does it a lot. Hank Williams does it a lot. There's an extra two beats or subtracting two beats. It's folk. You can get away with it. Johnny Cash does it too. And then it starts. So that was 9 and 10. Now we add a whole nother layer of, of some cool picking here. Measure 11. A couple of ways to do this. The easier on your finger way is I'm playing 3 on the first string and then 5 on the second string. He's hitting those and sliding up. The three goes to a five, and the five goes to a seven. So the, sh the shape stays the same. We'll 
talk about the picking in a second. Now, that's easy enough, but I would also recommend trying it like this. I know this is gonna be really weird, but give it a try. First finger on three, pinky on five on the second string. I know you're like, what the heck is this guy doing? But I'll show you why in a second. Because when we're doing that shape sometimes, the three and the five, we're gonna have to have that low bass note on the fifth fret. And if you're doing these fingers, then you gotta awkwardly bring your middle finger there. I can't, that's, that hurts more. I have like a mighty pinky. I'm always bragging about my pinky strength, left hand pinky strength. So I do it that way, but just know a very awkward shape is coming up. So be mindful of what fingers you're gonna to use to do that slide. You can do these two, but then think about which ones you're gonna use for the other shape. Do you wanna be consistent? Put some thought into that before you start practicing a ton. And you'll see once we do the next couple measures why I'm having you be thoughtful of it. But let's do this measure 11. We got that slide. I'm pinching those two strings with uh, pointer and middle, and I'm using um, my thumb to hit open. So I'm hitting all three of those, and sliding up, and then my thumb's alone on four. Cool sound. And then immediately after we do the fourth string, we hit the top two again, five and seven. And then it's just six, four. Measure 12, here we have that awkward shape to deal with. He's doing three and five, but then he also has five on the sixth string. That's why I'm doing pointer, pinky, and then my ring finger is hitting that low fifth fret on the sixth string. We're pinching all of them, six, two, and three. Then immediately you're doing two and three again. Then the thumb's on four. And now when that thumb goes to four, moving to that D shape because I have to do two and three on the first and second string. They're kind of weird. And then I hit the thumb on the sixth and then my thumb is heavy hitting four and three with that second fret there like we talked about before, that D chord. Doing this shape. When I hit that string open, I'm going to the D chord. I hit the top two, thumb, heavy thumb. I'll bring it up one more time. That's why I came up with the cheat. I know for some people, you're just gonna be like, what the heck, how am I going from this crazy weird shape to a D shape? Again, you can replace that five if you really wanted to. If you wanna cheat, you can replace it with open on the fifth string. Instead of fifth fret sixth, open on the fifth. And then that measure would be way easier because you would just have this. Then you, then you can do the easy finger way. I keep messing it up because I didn't rewrite my tab. And even with the slide, it would be, the whole transition would just be easier. So remember, if you want to retune this one to a G, you can do that and make it easier. Or you can do it the wrong way and really challenge your left hand chord shapes. Yeah. Before I cut you off, let's go through from 9, 10, 11, 12. All right, nice and slow. Three, four. So I'm doing the first one with, with these, but I'm just remembering to do this shape different then. Because if you want to slide, it is probably easier with one and three. But again, you can do this if you want to be consistent, because then you're just moving them and adding that finger. Cost benefit to each one, experiment. But after you experiment, don't experiment for too long. Kind of commit to one and do it. You don't want to learn and then relearn. That's always annoying. 13 and 14, you're not gonna like me. It still also has this tricky stuff going on. We have just the D, just the third fret on the second string. So the D chord, but really you just take that third finger. Six, pinching those two, one and two. Then the fourth string, and then pinching six, one and two, but the middle finger goes down to complete the D chord. So it's like the D sus to the D. So middle finger's up here, just the ring finger. Down and pinch him. So get used to that. For 
first half of the measure. And then we move up to three and five and we pinch all of them here. Four, two, and three. And it's that same shape as before. And we slide. So I've got four, two, and one. And we're doing that same slide we did before. So this whole measure. Cool, right? A lot of movement, but super fun. And here I'm thinking that my ring finger is leading. I got three open, I got two and three, then I move that ring finger up to five at my pointer finger. Right, just get used to the melodic line alone. Make sure that's really easy before you start making it crazy. And then we can add it all. Yeah. 14, we're coming from that slide. And this is tricky. Again, why I gave the alternate tuning idea, because you have to jump to that crazy shape here again. You get a little bit of time. So you do the slide, then you're gonna anchor that ring finger because he hits that note first. So you got a moment to get the other two in place. But again, not an easy chord shape. We're pinching, or we're playing just six alone. Then I'm gonna pinch four with one and two. And that has that three and five down like before, right? So thumb alone, pinch, and then I flip to the D chord and I'm pinching right away, six, one, and two. But I'm gonna do the whole D chord because then my thumb is heavy, hitting four and three, and the three's got that second fret. So we need the whole D chord there. Weird shape, thumb, pinch quickly to a D chord. I swear, it's, you can do it at tempo, Ronk's doing it. And like I said, I'm pretty sure he doesn't have it tuned funny because you'll hear him kind of, you know, slightly mess it up sometimes as if he's not getting to the shape quick enough. to cheat instead of doing that five you can just do the fifth string open <laughs> a lot easier the only reason I'm not recommending it is because I don't know that that's a tuning that people even do I mean you can do whatever you want like be an inventive guitarist I encourage you but I don't know I, I also don't want you getting into weird tunings that you're never going to use again just to play one song your call I'll stop saying it but it's up to you be your own guitarist and make a decision about it. You're doing great. We're getting there. Only six more measures. We are on measure, what, 15? We've seen this before. I think it's the same as nine. Yeah, it's this repeat of nine. You got the just the one string. It's like the sus chord. Thumb, and then you put the middle finger down. Check out the next one, 13, 14, 15, 16. This is a, a great measure. It's, it's again, the rhythm, it, it's, it's kind of staggered. I don't know, I need another word besides staggered. He staggers it. Uh, but the, the rhythm just, it sneaks up on you, it's unexpected. Instead of the and on the two, it's one. Two and three and, and it, it's just cool. It's unexpected. It's a nice little glitter, a little glimmering in there. So let's play it. <laughs> we have, we're preparing for the D chord, but we just have the pointer finger down, but we're gonna need that again. So we have thumb on six, heavy thumb. So I'm hitting four and three. No, oh, that was too many, there we go. Six, heavy thumb. And immediately I'm using my pointer finger to hit the second string. And then there's a compound movement here. I hammer onto the third fret. But the moment I hammer, my thumb hits the sixth string. So I'm not hitting the second again. It's just a loud hammer. But I am hitting the sixth string as I hammer. We do this in a lot of other songs. If this is new for you, your first time seeing it, it's very difficult. I call it like a compound movement. We're hammering, but we're also gonna add the sixth string on the hammer Sounds, it, it can fry your brain. You're like, wait, 
oh, there's another high sound, don't I have to picking that, picking that note again? No, you don't. And if you have a nice clean hammer, it sounds beautiful. It's what makes this measure so pretty. So really slow, six, heavy thumb, and then that compound motion. Then immediately we're playing open on the first string. I'm using my middle finger, not to offend you, but to be an effective guitar player. <laughs> not funny at all, I know. Then the fourth string. First, and then the thumb on the fourth. And then immediately you put the middle finger down and get the second fret on the first string. A lot of color in this measure. So cool though. I love it. Ronky, Ronky. Before we do the last four, let's double back to nine and play to 16, what we got so far. So right where it starts to get interesting, I don't want you to get lost, let's review really quick. From nine, three, four. Seventeen. Kind of a hard measure, I have to work on it still. Really, really awesome though. Man, this song is great. The more I play it, the more I am impressed by Mr. Van Ranke. Mr. David Von Rank. Mr. Dank Van Van Ronk. Von Van. I don't know. I'll, I should look it up, it's only a click away, but I don't, <laughs> but I like to amuse myself by not knowing. This measure's weird, 17, let's do it. I've just got the index finger down, as if I were playing a D chord, just on the second fret there. Six, then I'm playing pointer on that third string, then the fourth string. Then right after that, so six, three, four, then I'm playing my index again and I'm hitting two and three. It, it sounds a little colorful there. So it's just brushing up with that, that pointer finger or your middle finger, whatever you want to do. And same as before, we have a compound motion where we're going to hammer on the third fret after that brush. But at the same time, we hammer. I'm actually going to put this one down at the same time. I'm not going to hammer it. I mean, I'm kind of hammering it, but, but you know what I mean. This is the hammered sound, and then my thumb hits that sixth string at the same time. Let's do that first. It's gonna be hard, go slow. And my, my pointer finger's doing all that work. It's playing the second fret, then I'm lifting it, and it's gonna do the hammer. And then after that hammer, and, and the compound motion with the thumb, I'm hitting the first string open. Then thumb on four. So try that first. Then when your thumb hits four, you're moving your hand again, right? We've seen this early before. And then I'm playing that third fret, but now I'm not using my pointer, I'm using my ring finger. Because the next measure, we're gonna have to be back in that D shape to get some of those notes. So that whole measure is slow. to the other shape when my thumb is hitting that open on the fourth string. I'm going from here to there. I think you guys got it. Similar enough to the other measures, just a little more gymnastics. Then 18, let's do it. Pretty easy. Thumb, heavy thumb. So I'm hitting four and three there. Six, four and three. Thumb and, and that and is just open on the first on the second, so that D sus. Thumb, heavy thumb, six and four. There's the ending, six and four, that's it. So boom. Then 
And the last measure, because we're here and it's so easy, realize it as a D, put your middle finger down, we pinch, that's it. And the thumb does its thing. Pinch, six, one, and two. Thumb on four, thumb on six, thumb on four. I'm so proud of you. Wasn't this a fun song? I told you it was gonna be fun and it was fun. We had a good time doing it. Pat yourself on the back. Thank Jesus Christ for music and ears and fingers. What the heck is going on? What are we doing here? You guys ever sit around and think about that? Like, what? What the F is happening? You're in a body, you're in a meat body, wandering around, loving people, getting mad, forgiving people, drinking beverages, water, you bathe, you have teeth, you eat things, you, you excrete things. What? This is a wild existence. So be grateful. Be grateful you're here. And... and Thank God. Thank him every day because it's un unbelievable to be alive. All right, Dave on Rock. Let's do some run-throughs. And, I mean, that's it. You did it. I'll play it slow a bunch of times at the end for you here. But congratulations. I, if you've gotten this far in the video and you didn't love this song, you're not happy you learned it, email me. I'll, I'll, gi I'll give you, like, a gift. I'll give you a gift because I, I would be unbelievable. So I'll gift you if, it's, if something unbelievable happens. Uh, because it's a fun song, you must admit, comment below if you made it this far, just write FUN in capital letters, and then six months from now when you write FUN, I'm going to be like, wow, this guy's a weirdo, because I forgot that I had told you to do that. So instead of writing FUN, why don't you write like, doofus, so six months from now, six months from now, I'll be like, whoa, why, why does everyone, this video, why does everyone keep writing doofus? <laughs> Alright, let's do the whole thing. I'm learning with you. So we'll go slow and, you know, I don't mind my mistakes and I won't mind yours, alright? Two, three, four. I can't I can't reach especially with the capo that thumb chord and I just got used to doing it the other way but on the electric I would use my thumb over the top and play it that way I won't do it again you can just rewind remember the YouTube secrets if you hit your back arrow or forward arrow or your J or your L button it goes backward forward in time K will play and pause it super helpful to jump back a bit play it again jump back a bit play it again keep doing it at that slow tempo and it's awesome Let's add some lyrics to it and see if we can do it. Another small little note for people who are just gonna jump into it. Measure five, six, seven. He doesn't play when he sings. Um, he treats seven the exact same as measure one. He doesn't stagger the melody. He only does it for the intro. Sorry, I'm making the note this late, but you probably your ear probably picked up on it. So let's go slow and add the lyrics here to it. So I got my lyrics and everything up and we'll break it apart and chunk so we can do it together. So we start at the top of the tab. When I go by, he's just following the melody. When I go by, Baltimore, Baltimore, Baltimore. Yep, just following the melody there. Need no carpet by my floor, on my floor. Yep, just following the melody there too. On my floor. I don't know that he has the extra note here in five either. I'm putting it in because it sounds cool. Come along and follow me. So again, at the end of five, you don't need that second fret there. It could be come along and follow me. And then here he doesn't stagger it. We'll go down to 
so it's the same as measure one instead of a different. We'll go down to Galilee. Then in 11 here he picks up the chorus. Green, green, rocky road. Again, he's just following the melody, pretty straightforward. Green, green, rocky road. that up so from 13 again promenade in green one more time promenade so on the slide promenade in green and then here he follows the melody to this really cool part um So it's on that thumb, on the second beat, thumb. Tell me who you love, tell me who you love. For the most part, he's just following along with the melody, except for a couple moments where he, you know, he holds it a little longer than you think he would. But that's it. Go back, review that. But there's, there's no secret. Practice it a whole bunch. Actually, there is a secret. Get your microscope, zoom in, go as slow as you have to go. Don't rush it. If you spend a month on the first four bars, that's fine. If that's your skill level, that's fine. That's how you get better. When I was first Travis picking, that's what I did. You know, maybe it was one chord to the second chord and I would obsess on that until it was second nature. And then you go from there. So much fun. Mike's Music Method, we did it. <laughs> I am impressed by Mr. Van Ranky, Mr. David Von Rank, Mr. Dank Van Van Ronk, Von Van, I don't know. <laughs>